When a car reaches a certain point in its life cycle, it needs a facelift just to stay relevant. Now, sometimes these facelifts can be minor, other times they can be really radical. Much like a B-lister celebrity from Hollywood, trying to be, you know, still relevant. Now, in the same way, the Mirage G4 nameplate is also in need of a facelift just to stay relevant. Because it's been around the industry for about 10 years now, and it's come to a point in its life where it definitely needs a new look. Now, that being said, that's exactly what Mitsubishi Philippines has done with this Mitsubishi Mirage G4 in the GLS trip. help purchasing your car insurance? Head on over to autodeal.com.ph slash car dash insurance. Here, you can compare prices and customize your insurance coverage from many of the Philippines' top providers. When you've selected the insurance that's best for you, simply fill out the application and complete the transaction with ease through Visa, MasterCard, GCash, GrabPay, or PayPal and receive your policy within the next business day. Get the best deal on insurance with AutoDeal. Now, as this is a facelift, we're gonna start with the face. <laughs> Duh. Now, as you can see, the new Mirage G4 has now incorporated the brand's Dynamic Shield design language. Now, this gives it a new bumper, chrome accents on its cheeks, so to speak, a new set of headlights, and a new grill. The new look gives the sedan a more premium appeal while still giving it hits of sporty here and there. I mean, after all, Mitsubishi did drift these things during the launch so we can see where they were going when they designed it. While it's definitely not a performance vehicle, it does have a little bit of competition in it in the sense that its price tag is 899,000 Philippine pesos, which puts it roughly in contention of the same price of about the GDM Grand and the likes of the mid variants of, let's say, for example, the Toyota Vios, the Nissan Almera, and even the Honda City. Now, down the side, pretty much the same uh, lines and whatnot. You've got repeaters on your side mirrors and really not much else to talk about, body colored uh, door handles and not much. The one thing I do want to point out are these wheels. Now, these wheels look absolutely great on this automobile. It's a new design and I think that they are G for anything. As this is a facelift and not a butt lift, so to speak, there aren't many changes that you will find on the rear. Apart from the fact that the tail lights are still the same shape, but the configuration is different. And then of course, there is reflectors down on the cheeks, which are now vertical. I also must add that there's a nice tribute found down here to the late and great Evo. Now, when you do open her up, you are looking at over 350 liters of space, 357 actually, and sadly, it doesn't actually increase because the seats don't fold, but 357 liters of space in a subcompact, that's definitely more than enough to carry anything and everything that a family of four, possibly even five, will need to bring along even for Holy Week. Now, in the rear of the G4, I thought it was extremely important to show you just exactly how much space there is. Allow me to explain by telling you that this is not my driving position. This is Jack's normal driving position, and the man is closer to about six feet. That would probably be my, my normal driving position. But even as a passenger behind Jack's normal driving position, I still have quite a lot of leg room. Headroom is, is decent, but the legroom is excellent. Plus, unlike other subcompacts, you still have the ability to stretch your legs underneath the seat. That's actually pretty awesome. Now, toys back here include, well, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of toys back here. You've got a bottle holder in the center, which I guess you have to share with all four or five passengers if there were. There are no bottle holders in either door, just speakers. However, you do have a center armrest with two cup holders found right there. The rear seats, as well as the entire car, is still cloth, but it's a soft, comfortable cloth. And then there's a snazzy new design that, well, spruces it up a little bit. Elbow room is pretty decent for four passengers. One, two, three, four. If there was a third, you would fit. 
probably someone even smaller than myself. The tunnel is so, so high. It's not flat, it's just so, so high, but then the elbow room would really get a little bit tight. What I am surprised though really is the amount of space that you get back here. It's, it's like I said before, it's a subcompact, but really, look at it. Even if a tall person were driving, you still have room to quite literally stretch out. That's actually pretty amazing. I like that. Now at the, wow, how about the legs more jack? At the front, you are greeted by a familiar dashboard. Everything is still pretty much the same as the previous generation, except for the fact that there is a new gauge cluster that is now backlit with uh, white. So even when you're just looking at it at a glance or at night, it's actually very, very easy to see. Then you get a new seven inch infotainment system that not only doubles as your reverse camera, but also has Apple and Android capabilities. It also comes with a single zone automatic climate control, which is a great feature to have especially since Mitsu has improved the air conditioning system of the G4. So it may not have vents for the rear but it says that to expect it to be much colder than before. Now one thing of note is that the previous generation G4 actually had a center armrest and now there's it's it's gone missing really and I do quite kind of miss that. Also the fact that there are more piano black plastics found in high touch scratch areas. Now I do realize that Mitsubishi was, you know, trying to spruce things up, make it look a little bit more upmarket, but really these things are a bit dangerous when you, especially if you're holding a key in, or, or, or anything really, and, and you drop anything there and it can get, well, a bit old kind of quick. Uh, before we do set off on a drive, I completely forgot, let's talk about the engine, shall we? So underneath the hood, you are looking at a 1.2 liter, if I can open it, there, now you're looking at a 1.2 liter, three-cylinder gasoline engine that produces 76 horses and 100 newton meters of torque. And it's mated to a CVT to try and extract as much fuel efficiency out of it as you can. Now, speaking of fuel efficiency, inside the city, it does a very respectable 14 kilometers per liter. Now that's with heavy to moderate traffic. Outside of the city on the highway, it does a ridiculous 23 kilometers per liter. 23, this little thing. And then if you push it even further by, let's say, slowing it down to 60 kilometers per hour, which isn't safe, by the way, but if you do, you're looking at 25 kilometers per liter, which just basically goes to show you that Mitsubishi definitely has still got it when it comes to fuel efficiency. Now, before we set off on a drive, we'd like to thank all of our subscribers out there for, well, subscribing. And if you haven't, do please subscribe because we love creating these videos just for you. And well, we're basically on our way to a million subscribers. And when we get there, we might actually give away a car. I'm not authorized to say this, but maybe we bite. We just might, you don't know, really. Now, driving the G4 is as you would expect. It's relatively smooth, quiet, and comfortable. And then the CVT does a good job of keeping the revs low so that you maximize fuel efficiency. Now, there is a bit of road noise that does come in, especially on much rougher roads, like let's say, for example, Edza. But to be honest with you, it's actually expected from a car at this price point. Now, driving dynamics-wise, there is a bit of a delay when you turn the automobile. To be honest with you, that's probably due to the dampening of the car. They've changed it. And in all honesty, it's much, much better than the previous generation. I like it because it's great. See, bit of a delay, but yeah, the dampening just makes it much more comfortable, to be honest with you. As it is equipped with a CVT, don't expect it to pick up its skirt immediately and go when you floor it. Understand that there is only 76 horses underneath the hood, so drive it appropriately. When you do get going, it's actually pretty smooth sailing. Gets you where you need to go, and when you do bury the throttle because you want to pick up some speed, it will eventually get there. Um, do be prepared to put a little bit of space between you and any other car that you want to overtake just to get used to the distance and just how long it is, that, or rather how long it takes for the power to, cook, to kick in. Essentially, as a bit of a tip, I suggest to gently feed the accelerator so that the CVT has enough time to find the proper gear ratio 
so that you can do what you expect the card to do. Oh, and lastly, I found that unfortunately, the seat doesn't go down as much as you'd want it or like it to do if you are a much taller person, which Jack found out, which is why he needs to put his seat quite far back. However, I found for persons like myself and really the large majority of Filipinos that aren't Jack's height, the fact that the seat is raised, that the driver's seat is raised, actually works very well for us. The Mirage has been around for quite some time, and truth be told, it was an extremely popular option. But yes, it has fallen short of the competition that has recently entered the market. You're talking about like the M Grand and the Vios and the City. Those cars definitely have a leg up on this, this being the competition. But I'll tell you one thing, I doubt that Mitsubishi will just sit on their hands and not do anything about it. I expect them to revamp the Mirage sometime in the future with something very special. But at the moment, for what it is, well, you've got a price that's relatively attainable. And then the fact that it's extremely fuel efficient, which is extremely important now more than ever, makes it still a viable option. <music>